What's up? I'm Mike Adam. My name is Jim Shear. This is the show Give Me Five, and this week it's all about uh, artists that made a big comeback with uh, an album. It doesn't necessarily need to mean uh, like a bunch of time lapsed, but just an album that maybe made fans love them again. So, <laughs> let's get into it. The topic is top five comeback albums. Jim, let me hear. And I'm glad you gave that little explanation because that's where I went. Totally. It's For me, a comeback album isn't necessarily when you're off the grid for seven or eight years and then you put out an album. Yeah, that could be a comeback album, but for me, it's albums that sort of redefined the- Brought the band back. Yeah. So number five for me, the Red Album from Weezer. This came out in 2008. Weezer was still putting out good singles, but to me, they hadn't put out a solid album since their first two. And when they put this out, it reminded me of the feelings I got from listening to the Blue Album and Pinkerton. It was a solid album from start to finish. Number four, Down With The King from Run DMC. This was released in 1993. Uh, their album before that, I think, came out in 1990. It was called Back From Hell. It was a disaster. Run DMC were lost. And I thought, how the greatest hip-hop group of all time is lost. Somebody bring them back. And they came back strong in 93, not only with an album, but with a hit single, Down With The King, which yep. they played, which they still play to this day. Yep. Number three, All That You Can't Leave Behind from U2. Wow, yeah. So U2, there was a couple albums where they were experimenting with electronics and dance music and it felt like they lost their way and this album brought them back to basics and it was one of the few U2 tours where you actually were calling out for new material so this brought U2 back for me uh, number two Californication from Red Hot Chili Peppers absolutely uh, the album before that was one Red Hot Minute yeah which was David, oh, okay. wasn't bad I, I didn't hate it yeah. but it felt like they were losing their way, they were losing guitarists. John Frusciante came back okay. to the band, and the uh, the lead single was called Scar Tissue, and the music video, very fitting, they're all driving in the back of a convertible with bandages on. So they were basically saying, we've been through the war, but we're back, people. Here is your Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. And the number one comeback album of all time, for me, Check Your Head from the Beastie Boys, released in 1992. It was the follow-up to Paul's Boutique, which was a critical failure when it came out. Everyone now considers it to be one of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time. But the Beastie Boys, this was do or die for them. Because yeah. if they didn't put out a solid album, they were done. And this album is such a risk, because it's everywhere. There's instrumental music, there's hardcore songs on there, straight-up hip-hop songs on there, and it worked and it brought the Beastie Boys back, put them on the map, and then when they released their next album, Ill Communication, in 1994, they were selling out arenas yeah. again. Yeah. So Mike, yeah. give me five. Great list. Um, at my number five spot, I'm gonna kick it off with Common. He had uh, the album called B, and before that, I, I forget the name of the last album, but he again, he was experimenting with like electronic. It was so bad. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? Uh, so on B, that's when he linked up with Kanye and he mm -hmm. was affiliated with Good Music. And uh, oh my God, there was a feature on a Kanye album and he had a verse on there and you're like, whoa, Common's back. And then he comes out with this album and uh, it's produced by Kanye. He's got like uh, Testify on there, Go, The Corner, which which was like almost the the street single where it, it was so good and refreshing to hear common rapping back that way um at the number four spot nas still matic oh, yeah. not in terms of time you know he was still putting out stuff mm -hmm. it was just garbage and then still matic came out and i feel like jay-z unknowingly kind of uh re fueled the flames mm -hmm. to Nas and you know they had this beef going and he puts out one of the best albums of his life and just that a lot of people say you know you could go back and forth who won the battle but I mean the effort that was put forward mm -hmm. from Nas on both parties but that album was so good and I think people were like okay Nas is a force to be reckoned with again um, at the number three spot Daft Punk random access memories oh wow 
Uh, they didn't, so they did the Tron uh, mm -hmm. soundtrack, but as far as actual albums, no, it you're was, right. You're right. It was an eight year gap, mm -hmm. and this, I think, reintroduced them to a new audience, and it was their highest charting album. Um, and, you know, it, it went on to break all kinds of records. They're being them, played so. on pop radio. Exactly. For with, the millennials to listen to. Which they never did before. So <laughs> it was it was a huge comeback album for them. Um, at the number two spot, D'Angelo, Black Messiah. Wow, okay. That was almost number one for me because... Did that album inspire this category? Yes. Okay. It totally did. 14 years mm -hmm. since he put out his yep. last album. He comes back, wins a Grammy. Mm -hmm. Like... He was, I mean, I was just blown away. And you root for guys like D'Angelo because I grew up listening mm -hmm. to him knowing he was amazing. And it was one of those situations where you were like, hey, what happened to D'Angelo? Yep. And then for him to come back and the way he did, amazing. Number one, Red Hot Chili Peppers, California case. Yeah. Feel like they got lost along the way a little bit. Uh, their the last album before it was a hot hot minute. Well, yeah, one red hot minute. So it was good, but it was not Californication. And when that album came out, they had a different sound. The videos that accompanied the music was unreal. Uh, and the hits on that album, they kept on coming. And again, like uh, like Daft Punk, that was their highest selling album of all time, and mm -hmm. they they were achieving um, goals and reaching. Uh, like peaks that they'd never been to before. So that sold more than Blood Sugar Sex Magic? Yeah, that's their highest selling album. Wow. I didn't know that. That's uh, great. Yeah, that is crazy. So. There you go. Uh, let us know your favorite comeback albums of all time. I, I thought of a few more while this list was going on. So maybe I'll get on YouTube and add some <laughs> bonus material. Uh, until next time, for Mike Adam, my name is Jim Shear, and we will see Yins later.